You're watching the New Stack Makers, a podcast for people who develop, deploy, and manage at scale software. For more information and articles about at scale technologies, please visit thenewstack.io. Now enjoy the show. Hello, welcome to the New Stack Podcast. This latest edition was recorded July 28th, 2023. And the topic of the podcast is generative AI for DevOps. Uh, our, our guests, we have a couple of guests from the company Prompt Ops. Uh, we have Dev Nog, founder and CEO, and GK Brar, who's the founding engineer of Prompt Ops. Uh, welcome, gentlemen. Thank you. Thank you. All right. Fantastic. Fantastic. Uh, so we're going to divide this podcast into two parts. First, we're going to talk a bit about generative AI and uh, what it can bring to DevOps. And uh, secondly, we're going to be we're going to delve a bit more into what prompt ops can provide DevOps, uh, possibly with the use of generative AI. So uh, let's dive right in. Uh, so first of all, in the realm of DevOps, uh, what is generative AI? Well, in popular terms, generative AI is the class of algorithms which generate new content. So images, movies, text, code, music, or other audio. It actually goes back to a much older distinction in machine learning uh, between generative algorithms and discriminative algorithms. So discriminative are things like spam classifiers. It's like you see a bunch of emails and some look suspicious, some don't. That's discriminative. It's basically saying like there's a class of like good versus bad. But generative models actually try to create new content. They try to model the entire like, you know, distribution of the data that they see and they're able to sample new data points either they're able to create new plausible uh, content that did not exist before and we've had you know generative algorithms for decades you know hidden markov models were kind of a, a well-known one but the quality of output across a bunch of modalities across you know text and images and code really only got to where it is today because of a breakthrough architecture called the transformer which came out in 2017 and essentially underlies all of the gen ai models that you see today Huh, huh. And how does that work? Well, the different models work in kind of different ways, but, you know, the tools like, you know, ChatGPT and Bard from Google and Dolly all use that same transformer architecture. And they do something that's uh, called autoregressive. So all these technologies basically like take their own output and try to predict the next output based on the, the recent window, right? So they're saying like, what is the local pattern of maybe a bunch of words and then the next word or a bunch of characters and the next character or a bunch of code and the next line of code, right? They're saying, what is the local pattern? And you can contrast that with other machine learning algorithms, which try to generate an entire block of you know code or an image at once, right? They're not trying to like mm -hmm. model the local patterns, but it's trying to see the global pattern uh, across the whole thing. So for example, like, you know, if you have a, an algorithm looking at some code that might say like, you know, import Botto three, for example, like in, for an AWS script, the next line is often like, let's open up a session, right? That's going to happen over and over again. You're going to see that pattern. And so the code will actually like be, you know, picking up that pattern over time. And when it generates new code, it'll actually like have those two lines side by side quite often. Ah, terrific. So you could use generative AI in an IT setting to predict uh, actions, the next actions that a uh, admin might take. Exactly. So a lot of what we do is, you know, not kind of like, you know, from scratch, first time the world's ever seen. A lot of what we do is actually very repetitive. It's been done many, many times before. And in fact, you know, if you go to Stack Overflow, you'll see the same question might have 500,000 views, right? We're all trying to solve the same problems. And so what Gen AI can do is actually take those patterns that you see in the solutions and bring them to the rest of the world. They're having to like, you know, do the trial and error on production like we have to do right now. All right. Terrific. Terrific. So with that in mind, let's uh, delve a bit into the company itself. Uh, how was Prompt Ops founded or why was it founded? Yes. Yeah, so if you look at the Prompt Ops team, you know, we're almost 20 people now. About half of us came from a DevOps observability company called Wavefront, uh, which is a company that I, I founded and was CTO of. The other half came from the flagship machine learning project at VMware, uh, which became vRealize AI. And I'd, hmm. I'd founded both Wavefront and this machine learning team. And so when I started this company, I brought those teams together uh, to be sort of the best of both worlds. So the problem that we saw, like the problem that I saw really at Wavefront, you know, we had great customers, folks like Lyft and Box and Workday and Okta. You know, I realized at some point, you know, we were a data company, we were a metrics company. I realized at some point, you know, the data wasn't actually helping these companies get any better at, at DevOps. You know, they had enough data. They were swimming in metrics and logs and traces. The bottleneck had become process, not data, especially process knowledge, right? How to interpret that data, what to do with that data, how huh. to act on that data. That was the part that was hard for people to learn and hard to teach and hard to formalize and hard to save, right? So data is like the tip of the iceberg, the most invisible part. But all the process underneath that tip is actually the bulk of what we do in DevOps and also the bottleneck uh, to, to DevOps today. 
All right, terrific, terrific. I want to delve a bit more into that, but uh, initially, I just wanted to clarify something for perhaps uh, people have been following the company for a while. Uh, originally, you guys are named were named Control Stack, mm-hmm. and uh, like, tell me what, what's the relationship between Control Stack and Prompt Ops, and the relation between the company and the technologies. Yeah, so Prompt Ops is essentially the process engine able to understand human requests and commands and questions, able to read knowledge bases, able to generate the code on the fly to achieve tasks, able to tie together the right people at the right time. Control Stack is the is a data engine that underlies it. It provides the semantic connection between data entities like containers and pods and VPCs and lambdas, but also between social entities like which people tend to work together or reach out to each other in questions in order for us to give people the best answer that they want. So they really work hand in hand as process engine and data engine. Nice, nice. All right. So for the uh, uh, first, uh, for the DevOps teams, the administrator, perhaps even for the developer, what problem does prompt ops solve out of the box? So the way that we think about it is that, you know, most of what a DevOps team does is communication, communication with other people or with machines, right? Communicating with people means, you know, looking at chat or wikis or systems of record like Jira or Monday. And communicating with machines means looking at dashboards and doing log queries and taking actions through AWS CLI or KubeCuddle, right? So communication is both the bulk of the work and the bottleneck. Prompt Ops is hyper communication for DevOps teams. It makes communicating with other people faster by bringing the right answer from a chat conversation or a wiki page to you instantly. It allows you to create an incident report or a Jira task from a raw conversation in seconds. And it makes communicating with machines, right? You know, talking about logs or metrics massively sure. faster, right? Taking high level intent and mapping that down to the command required. So you might want to say like, you know, I want to see all the containers that are 90% CPU or higher, or I want to deploy this Lambda, or I'd like to scale this pod up to 14 replicas. Prompt is able to take that command and turn it down into the atomic commands and code, and then execute that for you on your behalf and bring that data back to you instantly. And that means that every single process gets faster and easier and safer, which is instant leverage for the whole team without any kind of training, right? Just drop it into your team chat, integrate your knowledge bases and your cloud accounts, and every search, every query, every action, every report becomes that much easier to complete. Terrific. Does Prompt Ops use generative AI? It does, yeah. GK, you want to talk about that? Yeah, sure. So definitely. We use generative AI in two different ways. So we actually try to reduce the amount of uses of generative AI by so, while serving user questions live, because generative AI can be costly, right? Uh, especially in terms of mm-hmm. latency, it can take a while. So when we're serving a user query live, we try to just use it to fill in fuzzy gaps in our pipeline. So for example, for intent matching, like if you come in and ask a question, get me my clusters, and those clusters can be ECS, RDS, Kubernetes. So we'll use your past history with us to fill in that intent gap that really what he's asking for is Kubernetes clusters and not RDS clusters. So this is the real-time usage. Most of our uses of generative AI is actually offline so that it does not impact the experience of the user. We go in and we, for example, create embeddings out of your data sources to create the graph that Deb was talking about, linking social entities to to DevOps entities, or to create embeddings to search your Slack and Confluence and other data sources better, and also to fine tune our model by creating data sets that match your history of usage with Prompt Ops. So, a bunch of places, but most of our usage remains offline as against online. Terrific, terrific. Uh, so, there must be a lot of competitors out there now. Well, since the since uh, ChatGPT came out, I'm sure there's a lot of companies that. Uh, are putting together some chat GPT based approach to DevOps, maybe incident management or something like that. Uh, uh, how do you guys differ from your competitors? Uh, wh- why would I go with you other than these other companies? I assume yeah. we're out there. Yeah. yeah, no one really does what we do, but the nearest companies are folks who are using LMs in their DevOps product, as you mentioned. So mm-hmm. far, what we've seen is that they tend to staple LMs onto their product. So the LMs there to make, you know, using their metric product or their APM product easier to use, right? But I think the scope of what's possible here is just a lot wider than what they do. You know, for us, we're not trying to make one legacy product easier to use. We're trying to leverage all of DevOps, you know, with like this amazing, like kind of like technology. That's a breakthrough. Terrific, terrific. Uh, so I am a uh, small business. Uh, say I'm the head of admin. Uh, how do I set up prompt ops? What data do you need from my office? And then what benefits? Uh, well, how, how would 
How would my uh, admins and developers use prompt ops and what would they get out of it? So you can start super easy. You just have to integrate with like, you know, Slack or Microsoft Teams and then integrate your cloud account, maybe your knowledge bases, you know, like uh, Confluence or Notion. Um, feel free to email me, you know, dev at promptops.com. Really, my name really is dev. I was born to be a dev. You know, feel free to like add some context about like, you know, your team and the core issue you want to solve. Let me know like you, you heard me on the, the podcast and I'll personally get you started. Are there any unexpected uh, benefits that I would see from prompt ops? Uh, sir, some things I might not have figured before I signed on, but is an extra e added benefit. So I think one thing that we see from everyone, you know, even outside of DevOps is that people complain a lot about repetitive questions, right? You're like, maybe, you know, someone who's like been around your company for a while, you have some process knowledge and people are asking you about the same thing over and over again. And so you have to go find the document or the, the conversation yourself every single time. And prompt ops actually is able to answer the question for you on your behalf. And that saves a ton of time. It just allows people to self-serve, to enable themselves to like, you know, understand like what you're trying to get done and how your process works without actually taking up any of your time or attention, which I think is magical. All right, gentlemen, thank you uh, for answering my questions. I didn't have any other questions. Any other aspects you think our listeners should know about prompt ops? GK? Just we will give you your birthday back to you. So, you know, come and experience the productivity gains. It's a, it's catered to DevOps, but it's really like Dev said, handles a lot of top level cases where, you know, you just make your life easier. All right, fantastic, fantastic. Well, gentlemen, thank you so much for uh, getting us up to speed on uh, generative AI and prompt ops and uh, how uh, prompt ops could, or, and generative AI could help the DevOps process. If you like this video, please give us a thumbs up. And if you'd like to see more videos like this, you can always subscribe to our YouTube channel. We're on all the major social media platforms. You can always find us at thenewstack.io. We hope to see you soon.